Blessings to you, wherever you may be. Uh, I hope you enjoy this teaching. There are a few traditions for counting up to Pentecost, Shavuot, what the Bible calls the Feast of Weeks. This feast commemorates a count of uh, a week of weeks, 49 days, and then the 50th day is the Israelite Wheat Harvest Festival of Shavuot. It's historically celebrated as when, as when Israel entered into covenant with God at Mount Sinai, and with believers, it's the day when the Spirit was poured out as a renewed writing of the law, this time on the heart, the seal of obedient sonship. Now, this teaching is concerning with the count that goes up to the Feast of Weeks and trying to understand the day on which we are to start the count. The start of the count was a day when uh, first fruits of the barley harvest were offered in the temple during a week-long festival called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The rabbinic tradition says this day of the first fruits for beginning the count began on the 16th day of the first month, the day after the first high Sabbath of the feast. The Pharisaic rules in their fixed calendar that also regulates the length of months has also made the day 50. The Shavuot feast is always on the 6th of the third month, which they call Sivan. Now, the Roman Church's count to Pentecost begins with the day of the resurrection. And just as Rome made Christ the true Pascha, Passover, who supersedes the original expression that Moses gave us, Messiah, according to Rome, is now also the true first fruit of the resurrection. And this is why Rome said uh, early believers would count to Pentecost from Pascha Sunday, Sunday, the day of the resurrection. They'd claim that uh, they received from the apostles that this was to always be from the first Sunday on or after the first full moon following the vernal equinox. Obviously a statement hard to back up, uh, but just so you know, the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century, they firmly established this as apostolic tradition. In Rome, the old tradition of the Israelite count was understood, but abolished and superseded. <clears throat> Got a quote here. In the Old Testament, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, was a harvest festival celebrating the end of the grain harvest and offering to God the first fruits of the harvest. The celebration took place 50 days, Pentecost means 50th, after the first day of Passover. The Roman Church did not remain true to what uh, they believed was the original way of counting. The view now was that it was changed from Jewish law by Christ to Sunday every year. And thus, although believing the original count was from the 16th, this was now just the historical old way of the Jews. Uh, another quote here from the Catholic Encyclopedia. According to Jewish law, Pentecost is a festival celebrated on the 50th day after the first Sabbath of the Passover feast. <clears throat> the early Eastern churches, whom Rome labeled the Quarter Decimans, founded by Philip and John, were different to the Roman church with interpreting the events of the Passion Week. They were more like Messianic Jews and Torah-keeping non-Jews of today, uh, who, who believe that yes, Jesus, Yeshua, is by typology our Passover and the first fruits of the resurrection, but this was not a license to supersede the calendar. <clears throat> Thus, they kept the Passover right on the 14th, and they spoke of also observing the days of unleavened bread. Now, here's where things get interesting, because although there were clear dif differences between these two groups uh, in the practice of the broader Passover season, the count to Shavuot doesn't come forward as a point of contention. For this reason, I believe that the Roman Church and the Quarter Decimans may have actually both preserved a genuine tradition from the Apostles that the Count to Shavuot should begin on a Sunday. The problem was that Rome by the 4th century had wandered so far from the Hebraic nature of the original Nazarene sect of the Apostles that they considered uh, that tradition doing those Jewish practices to be heretics. And for this reason, they uh, may not have understood why Messiah, within a Hebrew-Israelite context, may have taught the Sunday count. By the 4th century, 
all Rome really knew was Phariseeism, and the yearly Sunday count was clearly not according to the 16th rabbinic rule, and so Rome had their own ideas of where the authority of the Sunday tradition came from. However, as multiple scholars today point out, the first century of Yeshua had multiple Judaisms, and there's a long-standing internal Jewish disagreement over the count to the Feast of Weeks which is most likely a better reason for the historic Sunday count. Historically, the Sadducean Jewish sect of Yeshua's day, the Bethusian sect from after the destruction of the temple, and the Samaritans rejected the 16th claim and are believed to have begun their count to Shavuot from wherever the first day of the week, what the Romans called Sunday, wherever it fell within the unleavened bread feast uh, season. This is significant because this was clearly not motivated by the resurrection of Messiah because these sects were not believers. This first day Jewish interpretation even lives on today because even though Phariseeism dominates the Jewish landscape, in the 10th century CE we had the revival of scripturalist Jews, Karaites, a small remnant who seek to keep the law as it is written and they count from the Sunday and have Shavuot on Sunday as well, uh, with having zero desire to be Christian. Uh, it all comes down to how Leviticus 23 is interpreted. Leviticus 23, 9 to 11. And Yehovah spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land that I give you and reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and he shall raise the sheaf before Yehovah, so that you may be accepted. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall raise it. The ancient disagreement between the Sadducean, Samaritan, and Bethusian view and that of the Pharisaic tradition was in identifying the Sabbath being spoken of here. Rabbinic Judaism says the Sabbath was the high day of the 15th, whereas the other sects mentioned believe that this was speaking of the weekly Sabbath. And this is why the first day of the week, Sunday, was considered the day to start the count. Uh, there's a, actually a strong case for this interpretation, and therefore many Jewish, Messianic, and Hebrew roots groups have also begun this practice despite the rabbinic dominance of the Jewish expression. Firstly, when doing textual analysis of Leviticus 23 and Numbers 28 and 29, we can see that most appointments of our Heavenly Father are given month dates. Passover is on the 14th, the Feast of Unleavened Bread from the 15th to the 21st of the first month. The seventh month has the Day of Trumpets on day 1, the Day of Atonement on day 10, the Feast of Tabernacles, is from the 15th to the 21st, with the last great day being the 22nd. These monthly dates are specified and aren't disputed. However, the day of the first fruits offering for beginning the count Shavuot uh, and Shavuot itself are never given dates in the month. The starting day is never described as on the 16th, and neither is the 50th day ever described as on the 6th day of the third month. Sadducees uh, and others through history have noticed this and saw this as noteworthy. The most reasonable conclusion being that this is because these two points in the calendar were not to be fixed to the monthly cycle, but were fixed to the weekly cycle. This would explain why God can just say, offer the first fruits on the 16th. Secondly, uh, the day after the Sabbath, when we begin the count, this phrase uses the Hebrew word Shabbat translated as Sabbath, and this also goes against the rabbinic idea of this being the 15th high day. All days of rest in scripture are described as Shabbaton, usually translated as times of rest. However, it's only the weekly Sabbath and the day of atonement that are described as Shabbat. Why is this? Well, it seems to point to the weekly Sabbath and the day of atonement not being just days of rest, but that they have a stricter sense of ceasing. We know this because they are described as days of no work with no added clarification. The other rest days that are not described as Shabbat, 
they have the lesser description of no servile or no regular work or it may say that it's a day of no work as in Exodus chapter 12 and Deuteronomy 16 but then there's a clarifying statement afterwards that lessens its strictness. This seems to be about allowing the cooking of food which for Shabbats is forbidden and therefore Shabbats have a more significant day of preparation beforehand where food was also to be cooked. So many believe Shabbat in Leviticus 23.11 should point to a day of the stricter no work understanding and therefore should not be viewed as the first high day which is never called a Shabbat and that actually encourages the cooking of meals. Uh, the third reason that some disagree with the Pharisaic interpretation is from Leviticus 23, 15 and 16 and its use of Shabbat in verse 16. And you shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. You shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall present a grain offering of new grain to Jehovah. We're not just told to count seven full weeks, but day 50 of this count is described as the day after the seventh Shabbat. Now the rabbinic view claims that seven days could have been considered a Sabbath of days, but this feels uh, rather strained as an argument and is certainly not intuitive. Rather it seems more logical that if you begin the count from the day after the weekly Sabbath, that day 50 would be the day after the literal seventh weekly Shabbat in the count. The Pharisaic view therefore requires the Shabbat in verses 11 and 15 to be a reference to a high day and then in verse 16 to be different and viewed as a term for a seven day count. The reason is because the rabbinic view has no other way for explaining why day 49 could be considered in Torah as the seventh Shabbat and needs to find a way to explain this as not actually referring to day 49 and therefore day 49 can still be a regular work day. It's for these reasons that this one calendar tradition of Phariseeism has been challenged over the centuries again and again. And therefore it seems to believers like myself, who have mosaic leanings, that Yeshua as Israel's Messiah most likely taught his followers the same Sadducean way for counting. And this is where the early Sunday tradition came from. Now if you are in the Roman tradition or the rabbinic tradition, I want to say that we are all obviously like our father Jacob and we must never stop wrestling to see the face of Messiah and what his practice was. We all are looking through a glass dimly. However, there is something to be said of the leaven of people who say that if Yeshua came back, he'd be in the Christian uh, Catholic group of people or he'd be keeping the law according to the Pharisaic uh, oral tradition. Messiah is Messiah. And he is not a Messianic Baptist, Sadducee, or whatever box we can try put him in. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's not desperate to belong to any tradition. And on a truth level, he doesn't care for what we've been doing for the last 2,000 years, or if we have a huge following and are united in what is false. He obviously also doesn't want us to run after every wind of doctrine, but we should allow ourselves to soberly and thoughtfully question our traditions. And if believing to be lacking, then we are to move closer to him. Ultimately, he is the tradition. He's the author and the finisher of, of our faith. And when he was raised, God publicly declared that this one is over every institution, rabbinic, Pontiff, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, the clergy of Canterbury, myself, not that I carry quite the same weight, but everything is under his feet. He was literally raised by God as the firstborn with the glorified body of incorruption. He is over all creation, the heir to whom all things belong, and so we seek him. So there's a lot going on here, a lot of history, a lot of theology, two major dominant positions. But I personally, and more and more others, it would seem, are gravitating towards the day after the weekly Sabbath idea. I hope this teaching helps you understand the count better and the various views out there. I much love to you, and remember, Yeshua is the goal. Dates are secondary issues. What is important is to be mindful of our God and His Messiah in and out of season, 
and to approach him with clean hands and pure hearts as we seek his face. Shalom.